Hello and welcome to Bruce Springsteen Guitar Lessons. Hope you're all staying safe and well during these crazy times. So today's lesson is from small things, big things one day come. Thanks very much to patron Luca Solari for the request. Welcome back, hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. So now what we're gonna do is go through all the individual parts. Okay, so this song is in the key of D major and the tempo is roughly 160 BPM. I've seen a few live versions online where he's doing it in E major. Uh, so doing E blues, E5, A5, B5, etc. But this is in the key of D. Okay, so what we've got, uh, if we could start going through the kind of riffs first, because this song is based on kind of riffs rather than lots of chords and different strumming patterns, okay? So what we're gonna do is go through the D5 riffs. This is what you can hear, you know, throughout the whole of the song, okay? So it starts off with open D string and then second fret G string, which is a, uh, we're gonna call a D5 chord. Okay, and then basically what he's doing is he's alternating between that and putting your third finger down on the fourth fret of the G string. And what you're gonna do is downstrokes, okay? One and two and three and four and. So again, it's quavers or eighth notes. So you've got eight uh, strums per bar. I think it has a bit more of an impact if you do it uh, downstrokes, but you could always go down up uh, if you wanted to as well. So it's a classic kind of uh, rock and roll song, this, really cool, okay? So, so zero, two, Zero four. We're going to call that the D riff, okay? Or D five riff. Sorry. So one and two and three and four and. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the fourth fret on the the two and the four. So if I count this out slowly, one and we do two strums and then going to go to the fourth fret. One and two and three and four and. Okay. So everything else is on the zero two. First thing on the second fret, apart from the two and the four, the start of beat two and four, you're gonna to go to that fourth fret. And it creates a classic rock and roll kind of sound. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so that's the D5 riff. Okay, so now we're gonna do the G5 riff, okay? 
And I think he would be doing something like this. He might even be doing it like this. Um, but I think it's just best to stick in the open position. So I'm putting my middle finger third fret E string, and then I'm basically blocking out the A string with the underside of my middle finger. Then playing the open D string. Doesn't matter too much if you if you hit the G string as well, it will still work because it's a, the same note as the root note. And they're kind of interchanging, again, same rhythm that we've just done on the D5 riff. So one and two and three and four and one and three. Again, classic blues kind of progression. So that's the G5 riff. Again, so remember two and four uh, are where you're kind of changing to kind of the, the, the second part of that kind of chord sequence, okay? So you've got the D5 riff, G5 riff, and then the A5 riff is basically the same as the D5 riff, but on different strings. Okay, so you've got uh, open A string this time, first finger, second fret D, and third finger, fourth fret D, okay? So again, you're changing the two and four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's the, the D5, G5, A5 riff, which we're gonna have throughout the, most of the song, okay? And there is a, a second guitar part that I've played on the backing track when I made this that you can hear in the walkthrough. I'm gonna go through that in, as, a, as well in a bit, because um, that's actually a little bit more prominent once the whole band comes in, but it'll be worth learning both parts. Okay, so that's the D5 riff, G5 riff, and the A5 riff. So then there's a B minor that comes in, um, in the second, the third, and then the fourth uh, verses, as well as the um, guitar solo as well. So I've suggested, again, there's probably a few things you can do here. It's quite difficult to sort of pick out exactly what he's doing. I've watched a few live videos. So I think he's roughly doing either down strokes, one and two and three and four and with quavers or eighth notes uh, on the B minor. So again, B minor again, barring the second fret from the A string, two, four, four, three, two for that B minor. So only one bar chord for this song, okay? So he's either doing that, so down strokes, one and two and three and four and, or as I've put in the walkthrough, one and two and three and four and. So nice to standard quavers, eighth notes, one and two and three and four and. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Or you could even do some of the swimming patterns we've done before in a lot of the other videos, the classic kind of down, down, up, up, down, up. That would work really well. Or down, down, up, down, up, down, up. So feel free to change that up. Again, Bruce, several of the live versions I've seen, Bruce does mix it up as well, live. Okay, so they are all the kind of chords. Okay, so what I'll also do is put this song structure up on the screen now. So you can see here, I've put the, the main bars as just D5. So for example, in that intro, where you've got two bars of D5, you're actually gonna be doing the full kind of D5 riff. So think of it as one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Caught in the same for the kind of G5, A5, um, et cetera. So, okay, so what we'll do first is we'll go through that intro uh, and then we're gonna go through the first first. Okay, so the intro is just simply two rounds of that riff. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Cool, and then you start singing, again without the band. So you're gonna do four bars of the D5. So one, two, three, four. Then two bars of the G5 riff. Two bars of the D5. And then you do another four bars of the D5 riff. And then uh, the last four bars of this 16 bar phrase, D5, A5, two bars of D5. So the way I like to remember this is in kind of groups of these verse sections, uh, groups of four, okay? So the first four bars of the first verse are D5. Then for the next four bars, you've got two bars of G5, two bars of D5. Then you've got four bars of D5 again. Then one bar of D5, one bar of A5, and then two bars of D5. Cool, okay, so now what we're gonna do is go through the second, third, and fourth verses. Also, the guitar solo chords are exactly the same as the second and third verse. So 
Let's go through the second, third verse, and then the guitar solo. So all we've got here, um, first eight bars, pretty much the same as we've had in the first verse. So four bars of D5. Two, three, four, and then G5, two bars. Two bars of D5. Okay, and then another, this is the kind of third round of four. You've got three bars of D5. And then you've got this B minor chord. Yeah, what, so do the different strumming patterns or just stick with one and two and three and four and. Uh, and then you've got the D5, A5, and two bars of D5. Again, don't forget the uh, song structure will be in the description as well. Cool, so that goes, um, so you've got the second verse there. Second the same in the third verse, uh, and also the chords that go behind the guitar solo are the same. So don't forget uh, that any guitar solo videos will be on Patreon, so go patreon.com forward slash Bruce Springsteen guitar. Normally the solo videos are released about a day after I've released this on YouTube. Okay, um, so that's the second verse, third verse, guitar solo. Then the fourth verse is basically the same as what we've just done, second verse, third verse, guitar solo but you've got the last um, line is looped, okay? Uh, and then you've got the final bar slightly different. So what I'm gonna do is gonna play the fourth verse. So the first 16 bars of it are exactly the same as what we've had before. Okay, so four bars of D5. Two, three, four. And G5, two bars. Then bar seven, bar eight, bar nine, Bar 10, bar 11, bar 12, B minor, G5, A5, G5, G5, and then you loop that last line, but the last bar is gonna be different. So the last line of the fourth first, D5, A5, D5, and then the last bar. So here I basically use the D5 power chord just to finish it off kind of classic blues kind of type ending. D5, so zero, two, three, basically. Uh, and then strumming wise, you're gonna go one and two and. Okay, so there's four quavers or eighth notes, uh, but the third one is a dead note. So kind of making sure you mute the strings. And so it's just a kind of percussive sound. So you got this, one and two and three, four. Again, every, every other instrument is doing the same kind of thing uh, to finish off the song. So I just play that last line of the fourth verse, okay? So finish off the song. So you've got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Cool, so again, it's not too complicated. The main challenge is gonna be the speed. 160 BPM is fast. But again, if you're in a band situation, what you could do is, um, or, you know, or even if you're playing it on your own, just chop and change between this bit or the part that I've put in the backing track, okay? This kind of, uh, kind of choppy guitar part that actually you can hear, apart from the intro, you can hear this bit actually more than this kind of, I think again, with a lot of brew songs, a lot of layers. So, um, so we'll go through that in a second, that, that second guitar part. But what we'll finish doing in terms of structure, we'll just go through the chorus section. So the first chorus and then the second chorus, exactly the same structure. And what you've got is you've got the G5, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then two bars of D5. And G5, two bars again. A5 for two bars. And it's also one of those songs that feels like the whole of it is a chorus, really. It's not, um, it's quite an upbeat. It's a great sort of uh, live song. Cool, okay, so that's the, the structure of the, the main guitar parts and all the parts. So again, if you wanted to have a go, so if you're playing this in a band or, or just getting fed up of playing the, that same kind of fast riff, because it is pretty hardcore at 160 BPM. So what you could do again is, is balance it with that other part that I think is happening on the record. Um, and what's happening is, again, chord wise here, I've suggested maybe Stevie's playing this maybe part on record. Um, 
they do a D major bar chord. So five, seven, 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 five. So that's over when the other guitarist is doing this riff over the D5. Just do a standard D major chord. Now over any chords of the G5 on the song structure. So the, you can use a G over B chord. I'm trying to work out exactly what he's doing. It could be this chord or maybe because I know Stevie uses this type of chord and Bruce actually. Uh, so it's basically an inversion of G chord. Uh, it's a G over B chord, uh, but it works really well. Nice and bright, kind of funky sounding. So if you wanted to have a go at this, again, second guitar part, and play this over the G5 riffs. You put the third finger, ninth fret D string, and then uh, first finger is kind of barring the seventh fret on the G, the B, and the E string. So, and then middle finger on the eighth fret of the B string. So you're going to own nine, seven, eight, and then seven. So nine, seven, eight, seven. So I'm calling that a G over B that you can, that you can play as a second guitar part. Again, this is what I've recorded on the backing track. So try and get it as, as close as I can. Um, or roughly the main parts that are happening in the song. So G over B over the... Cool, so that's the, um, the G over B chord. So then instead of the A5 chord, you could do a... Uh, this is kind of a broken E-shaped bar chord. So fretwise, 7D, 6G, uh, and then you're barring the fifth fret on the B and the E strings. So it's a nice kind of bright sounding, a kind of funky sounding chord. So that's an A major and you'd play that over any chords on the song structure that, or any of the A5 riffs. Okay, uh, and then for the B minor, I suggested just doing, okay, uh, ninth fret uh, D. Again, this is a broken B minor E shape. Ninth fret D and then bar the G, the B and the E strings with your first finger on the seventh fret. So you can see this is kind of a partial bar or a broken chord, okay? So you're not playing the full bar chord, but just part of that bar chord. So this is the, these are the chords that I use in the backing track that you can hear. Um, so again, you play that B minor over any B minor chords instead of that, you know, to go alongside to uh, that. So in terms of the structure, so again, the main band comes in on the second verse, okay? You've got that nice little max uh, drum fill, and then you've got the, the rest of the band comes in. So I've started playing this on the backing track in the second verse, and then just done the same rhythm all the way through, okay? So the rhythm I've suggested is, um, again, quavers. So you're, you're coming in on the and of one, so it's one and. So the first half, of the beat, beat one, you're gonna rest for. So one and, then do an upstroke. So one and for quavers or, or uh, eighth notes. One and, and do two mutes. So release pressure on your fretting hand. You get that kind of cool percussive dead note sound. So you're gonna go one and, two and three. And then do a downstroke on beat three that lasts for kind of half a beat. So all quavers and then you're resting for the rest of the bar. Okay, and in conjunction with the, I think it combines really well. Okay, and again with a lot of Bruce songs, there's a lot of it's about layers. Okay, so you've got Steve doing one version and then Neil's and then, and then Bruce. So, yeah, so let me go through that strumming pattern again. So one and two and three, four. And you can apply that. So again, D major over any D5 chords or riffs. The G over B over any of the G5 riffs. A major over any of the A5 riffs. And then B minor over the B minor. And it will just work really well. And again, if you wanted to play some of the other parts, I think this is roughly what's going on. You might be playing it slightly different areas of the neck, but it sounds pretty close. So. So let me play, say, the second verse, but with, imagine that we're playing the second guitar with that strumming pattern. Okay, so you've got one and two and three, four. So second bar, third bar, fourth bar, fifth bar, sixth bar, so it's a G over B, and then D, 
and then D, so third line of the second verse. B minor, D, A, D. Let's just go through the chorus, for example. So instead of the G5, play the G over B, one. Two bars of that, D, G5, A5. So it gives you some other options. Um, and you can always mix it up, you know, if, um, you're playing along with a song or playing in a band, you know, one of you could play this riff to start with and then switch to the other part. And if you're playing a bit of rhythm in your band or whatever, you can play that bit and then you switch to the lead part. So it just mixes it up a little bit more. Cool, so that's all the parts. Um, hope you've enjoyed the video. Again, if you need access to guitar profiles, guitar backing tracks, guitar PDFs or any requests, things like that, head over to patreon.com forward slash Bruce Rinkson guitar. Um, the guitar solo videos again will be available um, probably the day after I've released this, or maybe sooner. Uh, again, I, I normally, for all the upcoming videos, I record uh, another version of this video with tabs and chord diagrams that are added to this part of the video, okay? So you'll be able to see more tab, not just in the walkthrough, but in the breakdown. So hello to Patreon if that's something you're interested in. Uh, feel free to give it a big thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and you sort of uh, hit me up in the comments if you've got any questions or anything like that. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, thanks again to um, Luca Solari for the request. Um, hope you're all staying safe and well. Thanks very much for watching and see you next week. Okay, bye.